Good evening. This is Maestro Cortello with a Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Modcast. Today, we have a 2v2 on Calderas Refinery. Our first player is Floyd, playing as the Plague Champion. The Plague Champion is a Chaos Range hero dedicated to the god of Nurgle. Starts out with a damage over time bolter. Later on, he can switch to melee weapons. He can also heal with his worship, as well as mucus discharge, repair, and build turrets. Next up, we've got Noisy playing as a uh, Blood Angels Force Commander. This is one of the uh, new schemes in the Elite Mod. Schemes. Themes. Uh, Force Commander is a tanky melee hero. He has standard armor, or it might be artificer armor, or whatever. But he's not in Terminator armor, so he can be knocked down and suppressed. He does not walk through cover. However, he can tank damage, buff things with Battle Cry. Right here, he can just get shot at. We've got another Force Commander. This one is played by Ace of Swords. Actually using pretty much the standard skin, but his own custom color scheme. And then finally, we have Gidolo, playing as an Uthwe DLC Farseer. Farseer is a light me melee hero with a lot of support and disruption. Well, not disruption, but disabling and control abilities. Right there, the uh, Farseer used Guide on the Dire Avengers that will increase their range as well as their damage. They actually did a lot of damage to the scouts, but the scouts were lucky to not lose a model. And we're getting, seeing a fast infiltration upgrade, which is very, very curious to spend your first power, uh, your, make your first power purchase infiltration on scouts. Now, scouts normally pretty much straight up lose to Dire Avengers in Tier 1. That's definitely one of the things you want Dire Avengers to do in Tier 1 against Space Marines. Have them engage scouts because they don't want to be engaging tactical Marines. They will win over the scouts uh, in range combat, but they will not win over the tactical Marines. Blue team with an early double cap, but not a whole lot of engaging just yet. And here we see scouts again. Scouts on scout action. Uh, with one scout winning out on the other one, so Floyd was moving in with his Chaos Space Marines. So there are a lot of early, like, unit matchups, especially in the early game, where there aren't that many squads. You really just want to manage, like, the individual unit engagements, uh, have, have Chaos Space Marines engage scouts, because they will win that, have Tax engage Chaos Space Marines, because they will win that. So here we see, um, Tactical Marines engaging the Chaos Space Marines, uh, and there's also, we do have the Force Commander leading in, so that will also prevent the Chaos Space Marines from focusing on the attacks, probably, because they'll be focused on the Force Commander. Force Commander needs to get out of there, and now he's actually in a lot of trouble. This could be an early hero wipe, and I think it will be uh, for Ace of Swords, so he very quickly loses that hero, extending him a little, little bit just too much, and then he also had to face uh, the melee damage of the Heretics in Retreat, as well as the Plague Champion with his damage over time bolter. Now, the damage over time bolter, bolter is not that powerful, but it will do, it, it is good for doing damage on retreat. Just during a regular engagement, it's, it's really only about as good as the Chaos Space Marine squad. But on retreat, it is better. So it looks like Blue Team ha having a better time in the early game. Things are st it's still very, very early yet, but they've had the better end of map control. The, they have the double cap, consequent, consequently the VP lead. And we also did have a hero loss for Ace of Swords. It should be an easy revive for Gidolo as soon as he gets there. But it is still just time that Ace of Swords is not going to have his Force Commander. Banshees do try to catch the Tactical Marines in retreat, but they don't get that good of an angle. And the Tactical Marines still had a lot of health left, so no models lost on that Tactical Marine squad. Red team is getting out of here. Where is the... You know, all right, Farseer is coming to reveal... That, not to reveal, to revive. So um, a melee fight between scouts. Now, one squad of scouts is already down to two models, so that's... Wow. Well, I guess there was some support from the Assault Space Marines as well as the Tax, so that was definitely going to result in this squad of scouts, which was totally unsupported, getting forced off. Anyway, we have some uh, sneaky scouts. They're going for a decap on, or even a cap on requisition, but they run out of energy. So at this point, they should be visible. Should be easy pickings for this ranger squad. And I think a ranger squad will even take a close range shot. Ooh, well, we even have uh, scouts just retreating out of there before they can lose a model. Anyway, Assault Marines jump the Guardian Weapon Team, but here come the Banshees to counter-initiate against the Assault Marines. And Assault Marines just retreat out of there with full health, not even bothering to try to stay in there because it's generally not worth their trouble, especially with all the support we've got out from Gidolo with Dire Avengers, which still do not have their aspect, which is actually not entirely uncommon. 
Now, giving them their aspect will give them fleet of foot, it will give them the grenade, as well as the energy shield, and those are all extremely useful things. But sometimes in the early game, players will prioritize getting out uh, support weapons faster. And by support weapons, I am referring to the, the Ranger Squad as well as the Guardian Weapon Team. Basically just getting out new squads. Sh infiltrated Shotgun Blast to disrupt the Guardian Weapon Team. That's pretty nice. This looks like Gitalo getting doubled by Floyd and Noisy. Now Floyd with a pretty wreck heavy and expensive tier one build. He's got Raptors. He's got double chaos space wounds with Eternal War. Now, Raptors are usually pretty important for the Plague Champion since he does not really counter, does not really deal well with things like setup teams as well as the other Chaos Heroes if he does not have Raptors. Alright, Blue Team in a pretty good position right now to complete a Power Bash with double Chaos Space Marines, a Plague Champion, and some Heretics. They should be able to bash quite a few generators. Now the heretics are going for the decap. They could definitely contribute to killing generators if they also decided to bash. But it looks like we already have the counter attack from Gidolo. And I think it's actually maybe a slight misplay to target the node instead of the generators. I think this heretic squad, although it's in there suppressing a lot of things, it's overextended, could go down, probably going to go down. So that actually is a loss of a heretic squad for Floyd. Uh, really just in there against a few too many things, and then the retreat was really not quite as fast as expected, so Floyd immediately replacing those heretics. Unfortunately, he did have an aspiring champion on those heretics, so that was a bigger loss than it perhaps should have been. And uh, I think the red team, the blue team now overstaying their welcome a little bit, and I think this is a very strong counterattack by the red team. Managed to wipe a heretic squad, really sending the uh, blue team reeling in retreat. And we actually have a four-man Assault Marine squad, so that means Ace of Swords is at Tier 2. In fact, the entire red team is in Tier 2, while the blue team is not there yet. Floyd hasn't started it, Noisy has started it, but it's still only halfway there. You know, we've got more sneaky scouts. This this scout play is very interesting by Noisy, because he's he seems to be just being sneaky and applying map control pressure. However, right now they are reveal revealed by the Farsight Global. So that was a, this is a very smart play by Gitalo. The Farseer has a global called Farsight, which will reveal the Fog of War as well as reveal infiltrated units. And I believe it only cost 35 red, and he was using that to reveal the infiltrated scouts and really counter Noisy's early infiltrated scout play. It's a great global, and it's... Um, even though it's it's obviously not like a global that does damage, but it's it's a very useful and good global, especially considering how cheap it is. Now I did see we did see definitely see some blob capping from the red team. I feel they could have maybe sent one squad, uh, basically just one squad, to capture this point while they started harassing power. As it is, I think the blue team's power has gone pretty much completely unharassed, and despite their early map control, they somehow got to tier two later. Uh, that being said, Floyd did of course have a, a bit more of an expensive build, I would say. Noisy. Well, he had like a standard size build, but he also did invest in... He definitely invested in scout upgrades, and here are those infiltrated scouts. I think, again, either... Now they might just be detected by the rangers. Uh, scouts now in a bit of trouble, and I think a shotgun blast saves them. So we have raptors going in. What is happening to these howling banshees? I don't know. Even, I didn't even see how they, they were taking all that damage, but the force commander is going to try to finish them off. Howling banshees actually do manage to get out of there with one hit point. And a, not, a very nice grenade up by Gitalo, and that was probably also guided as well. Kills every single model on that Heretic Squad, and uh, Red Team looking like they're doing well here, but here comes the Howling. The Salt Marines do use Merciless Strike. Knock down a bunch of stuff, but here is a Force Commander also to deal with them, and we have a Tactical Marine with a Missile Launcher to deal with this Wraith Lord. Wraith Lord out on the field for Gitalo. Gitalo also did lose his Rangers, although I didn't see where that actually happened. Anyway, now we actually have a Singing Spear Farseer, so we now see some upgrades going up on the Farseer. Uh, we've got the Singing Spear, that is a heavy melee spear, does some pretty good damage, not quite as much damage as as many of the other tanky melee heroes in the game, or as many of the, the heavy melee weapons that many of the tanky melee heroes have. 
but it's still very good at 69 DPS heavy melee. She will be doing great at uh, bleeding tactical marine models, assault marine models with that, as well as being able to deal with vehicles if she can get in range of them. Meanwhile, Wraith Lord over here right now has no... It does not have a weapon upgrade, so right now it just starts out with that standard pea shooter. I don't remember what the actual weapon name... It could just be a shuriken catapult. But the, the range damage of that shuriken catapult on its arm is actually very, very meager. It's something like 10 DPS. I think it's actually more like 9 point something to be more exact. He can, of course, get the shoulder-mounted shuriken cannon. That will add on roughly another 45, or maybe more specifically, probably a 46 point something. Uh, or he can, of course, get the Bright Lance upgrade, which is very, very powerful for dealing with vehicles. Would especially be powerful, I think, for dealing with this Razorback. So I think if he sees this Razorback, might be a good idea to go for the Bright Lance upgrade on the Wraith Lord. Meanwhile, Scout's just sitting in cover and just take a Devastator Marine plasma cannon shot. So the Force Commander teleports in with Battlecry doing a lot of damage to these um, this Devastator Marine squad and actually takes out two of the models teleporting in. Meanwhile, something needs to also take out the Guardian Weapon Team because they're just going to suppress the tactical Marines. If anything, it might be a flank from the Razorback right here. The Razorback, does it have a good angle to get around the shield? Yes, it does. Now, Noisy just has to be very careful with the positioning of the Razorback and I think that's why already, already he's moving back the Razorback puts the, yeah, he puts the, puts the tactical Marines inside, and yes, I think it was very, very smart that he already started moving the Razorback just when he had that position, because he had to deal with the possibility of a potential upgrade from the Wraith Lord with the Bright Lance, an opportunity upgrade, and that's exactly what happened, and Noisy has actually, if anything, managed to really turn this around, and now he's got the, the Wraith Lord in a lot of trouble, but if anything, I think the Wraith Lord will probably be fine. And it's actually Noisy who's going to have to get out of here because the Howling Banshees are already getting in on the, t on the Howling Banshees. But they're being buffed. Actually, now, Noisy is turning it around. Potentially takes out the Farseer. Takes out the Howling Banshees, too. My god. So, Gidolo. At first, it looked like Gidolo was going to make his way back with the counterattack. But I think we had some battle cry. Uh, buffing the damage of all of these things, the Assault Marines, the Tacks, the Shotgun Scouts, as well as, I think, even a For the Emperor global buff on the Tactical Marines. Oh my god, this Wraith Lord in a ton of trouble. This is a second Meltabomb from this Assault Marine squad, so they were actually in here long enough to let the Meltabomb cool, to cool down. Actually able to, yeah, this is definitely the end of this Wraith Lord. The Tactical Marines will be able to get another missile shot off, and it goes down. Gidolo just got murdered horribly in that engagement. Got absolutely destroyed by Noisy. Noisy should now take this opportunity to bash a lot of power. Gidolo, meanwhile, still trying to counter-attack a little bit. He's only got a squad of Dire Avengers active on the field. Ace of Swords, gonna have to do something. Ace of Swords magically already has a Predator. Where did this come from? He is the only one in Tier 3, and, I mean, wow, he's in Tier 3 with the Predator. And that Predator should mark the end of this Razorback if the cannon will appropriately target, but instead it will go after the Force Commander. He's still chasing after the Predator, or after the Razorback rather, but it's still going to take, I think, two cannon shots, two cannon shots to take, oh, well, only one cannon shot to take out that Razorback. I underestimated the uh, damage. And this Assault Marine Squad actually in a ton of trouble, or rather the Vanguard Veteran Squad does manage to get out of there. We've got competing Thunder Hammer Force Commanders with actually very different upgrades. Alacrity on Ace of Swords. Um, Artificer on Noisy. The uh, Predator now in a little bit of trouble. I think, yeah, an Assault Marine. Meltabomb goes off, but no support can actually follow it up. So Ace of Swords actually doing pretty well. Took out the Predator. Noisy actually, meanwhile, also lost a Scout Squad. So after Gidolo got hit really, really hard, uh, I think Ace of Swords managed to make up some ground. And he's, he's actually doing pretty well. Floyd, meanwhile, lost another squad of heretics, and he's actually in Tier 3. It doesn't look like he actually got any squads out of Tier 2. So, despite the... the... <laughs> the incredible play Noisy made against Gidolo, it actually still looks pretty even in terms of, basically, the... kind of the flow of combat, as well as squads. Red team, in fact, actually with the VP lead, so if anything, they're actually in an, in, in, in an advantageous position. That was a very difficult uh, sequence of syllables for me to get out of my mouth. And red team actually with the double cap again and applying more VP pressure. 
here is another squad of infiltrated scouts. Floyd is building a Chaos Predator, which is pretty nice. I guess, I'm guessing he'll get a Laz Cannon on it because there's already a Space Marine Predator out on the field. Uh, and generally, if Chaos Predators want to compete with Space Marine Predators, they should get the Laz Cannon. Although generally, the Space Marine Predators do just straight up have the advantage because they can get that extra armor upgrade. Assault Marines going for the Reapers, or rather, <laughs> Chaos Raptors going for the Reapers, and now Vanguard Veterans going for the Chaos Raptors. Um, Vanguard Veterans should win this fight. They do use their ability, but it actually appeared to miss or something. Uh, and actually, one model goes down on the Chaos Raptors. They did not do well in that engagement. Vanguard Veterans attempt to jump on the Assault Marines. Assault Marines attempt to jump by the Raptors, or by the Predator. And here we have uh, Terminators. Where did they come from? Called in. Must be called in fairly recently. Uh, and they actually are going after this Predator. This could be a dangerous play. Actually, I don't think it could be a dangerous play. In fact, I think they will finish off the Predator. And yes, they will. This Predator is going so slowly. Uh, and now it's crashing very slowly. Bam. Goes down. You know, here is the Laz Cannon Predator, the Laz Cannon Chaos Predator from Floyd. It can get a Laz Cannon, uh, and it will be equal to a 700 health Space Marine Predator with a Laz Cannon. However, it cannot get an armor upgrade, so that is that is pretty much the disadvantage. Generally, the I I would say pretty much that spa that Space Marines do have the better end of tank warfare than Chaos, and it's it's pretty much just on that extra armor upgrade. Dire Avengers now setting up an energy shield. Get a little looking thin, and he's gotten a D cannon of all things. D cannon is a very good unit. It, it is, in many ways, it is extremely good. Um, part of the tough late game Eldar line that can really help to hold points. Eldar do have some of the longest range artillery in the game, and the D cannon is one of those units with absolutely uh, massive range. Meanwhile, shotgun scouts right here coming to maybe force melee the D-cannon, so the D-cannon will not be able to fire. Uh, and uh, the shotgun scouts are, they just continue to shoot. They use their explosive shot on the uh, Dire Avengers, but once the explosive shot is on cooldown, Dire Avengers will get up and they will have the advantage. Level 3 Dire Avengers, but with no squad leader. 800 and 881 hit points. Here comes the force commander to teleport in with that tracking special attack. And we do have Tactical Marines from Noisy getting the cap on. Actually, the red team's natural, and it will soon be a triple cap for the blue team. Plague Champion right here does use the Plague Fist Pestilence Strike ability, which will re that will reduce incoming range damage. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be able to close the distance quickly enough. And he uh, did take a uh, Plasma Cannon shot. Raptors jump in. They do clear out some of the Space Marine line, especially the Plasma Cannon Devastators. Tax also in a little bit of trouble. That also lets the uh, Plague Champion get in. Unfortunately, um, Pestilence Strike is on cooldown because he used it way back over there, which I think is a little unfortunate. Anyway, oh, here is Touch of Nurgle from the, uh, from the uh, Chaos Heretics. Um... And I was going to say the Chaos, Her Chaos Heretics should counter-initiate against the Vanguards, but they could have been in trouble if the Vanguards did use the Merciless Strike on them. Merciless Strike is a very useful ability for Assault Marines and Vanguard Veterans to actually counter Heretics when normally Heretics are going to be the counter to Assault Marines. So there he actually used Touch of Nurgle to really just give him the advantage. Uh, this Heretic squad, I think, should actually get the heck out of there. Only down to the Aspiring Champion and could get taken out very, very easily by a Predator. This is some very, very brazen Predator play by Floyd. Uh, it does have a bit of an advantage despite having less health. It does have the Laz Cannon, and that actually pretty much gives it an advantage. So, yeah, Laz Cannon Predators just in general, are going to have an advantage over auto-cannon auto predators because they really do that much more anti-vehicle damage. Uh-oh. Here is a... Oh, no! <laughs> oh, man. Was that Ace of Swords' own orbital bombardment? Oh, but a Chaos Space Marine squad actually did get wiped and all that. 
I thought he was about to to just wipe his own his own Vanguard veterans, but he he managed to not do that. But anyway, blue team now with the lead in VPs, 183 to 110. Anyway, Seer Council now out for Gitalo. A nice Banshee, Banshee replacement late game if you lose your Banshees. Uh, I think putting Seer Council out on the field fresh is not that much more expensive than actually getting a fresh Howling Banshee squad and then fully upgrading it in the late game. So in the late game, probably just better to get Seer Council than, than actually Howling Banshees. Scout Marines, unfortunately, not really going to be able to stop this squad of Raptors. Raptors... Raptors actually managed to completely dodge that grenade. Here they are about to jump. Unfortunately, here is some reinforcements for the Scouts. Scouts are not doing well, but you know what? Vanguards will definitely overtake the Chaos Raptors. Oh my god. Was that two models going down? Ooh, these Chaos Raptors are getting hit hard. If we have a jump from the Vanguards, they could potentially wipe this squad. We need to make sure to turn and engage. Very, wow, and they do it! So nice play from Ace of Swords in that particular engagement. Anyway, we do have a Vanguard veterans actually from Noisy now chasing after a fire prison. Here is a... Here is a time field. Tactical Marines just getting a shot to death in that time field. And we do have the Vanguards chasing after the Fire Prism. We also have the Force Commander coming in against the uh, Seer Council. That Seer Council, I mean that Force Commander, if anything, probably saved his Vanguards. I have a feeling the Vanguards would have been wiped on retreat if it were not for this Force Commander with the Thunder Hammer disrupting the Seer Council. And, oh, wow, it looks like... Uh, Vanguard veterans from Ace of Swords managed to finish off uh, one of Noisy's squads, if not two of them, because tax are gone, uh, Vanguards are gone, but the Land Raider Redeemer is here. So double cap now for the red team. So a blue team now looking pretty thin while the red team is looking pretty strong. That being said, Floyd has a lot of resources, so he should really put something down. Uh, he has enough resources to literally get anything. My guess is that he wants Terminators, and then he wants... Oh, no, just wrong. I was wrong. He's getting a great unclean one. He did have enough red to get Terminators, and I was wondering if maybe he wanted to save uh, a Terminator call-in for, like, in the middle of an engagement. Anyway, uh, backhamping scouts here in a ton of trouble, but they do retreat out of here, and there no there's no melee damage here, so the scouts should be fine in retreat. And here is the Land Raider Redeemer. It does act as a retreat point, so the scouts actually just retreat right to the Land Raider Redeemer. Predator starts moving in, taking last cannon shots, but it does get hit by a D cannon. And I mean, the Space Marine Predator, or rather the Chaos Predator, um, not quite as strong because you can't, not quite as durable because you cannot get that extra armor upgrade. Here, this should be a singularity. Plasma cannon shot went in, but Noisy ties. Oh! I was going to say, he tied up the, the D-Cannon so it can't use the Singularity, but it still managed to get it off and nearly wiped the Scout Squad. Land Raider might want to move forward so that these Scouts can actually get some reinforcements. It is reinforcing the Scout Squad, yes. So here comes a reinforcement, but Force Commander is going to go down in retreat. That being said, the Seer Council are still here. They're up against the Seer Council. Wait, the Assault Terminators are up against the Seer Council. Assault Terminators need to be very, very careful. I mean, as tough as they are, there are a lot of high damage sources against it. Very, very high damage. They're actually losing their health very, very quickly, and I think they might want to get inside that Land Raider Redeemer, or at least just get close to it to scare off the Seer Council. Fire Prism is moving back, does not want to get too close to the multi melta on the Land Raider Redeemer, and definitely needs to stay very, very far away from the Chaos Predator. It is now pretty much dead, because once a Chaos Predator gets in range of a Fire Prism, that is usually pretty much it for the Fire Prism, unless the Fire Prism can get some kind of support. Um, oh, and here is that support. The Time Field. And now the Farseer will run in. Very, very nice play by Gidolo. Nearly lost that Fire Prism, since generally, once a, um, once a 
a Laz Cannon Predator gets in range, or even or even an Auto Cannon Predator gets in range of a Fire Prism, uh, the Fire Prism is pretty much screwed, since the Fire Prism does not have the health of a Predator, it does not have the damage of a Predator, and a Fire Prism is actually slower than a Predator. So actually, pretty much once a Predator gets in range of a Fire Prism, it is generally screwed without support. Um, but we did see exactly the kind of support we needed from Gitolo. He used the time field to uh, prevent the Predator from firing, and then the uh, Farseer herself was actually meleeing down the Predator. Anyway, here is the Great Unclean One. Uh, new Predator out on the field for Ace of Swords, only with the Laz Cannon upgrade and no, uh, no extra armor. But we do have a Force Commander switching to the Power Fist. And that's the end of the Fire Prism. Unfortunately, that is so, so powerful now that the ability has been changed so that it tracks. So you can no longer dodge the Flesh Over Steel ability, which, in my opinion, is not... I don't, I don't particularly like that change. But for now, that's just the way it is. Um, Flesh Over Steel tracks. It does... I believe it also... I believe to compensate for that, the ability does not last as long. And it's... Um, costs more energy. Anyway, Land Raider goes down, Eldritch Storm combined with an Eldar, with a, with a Avatar to stab it, uh, and Noisy losing a bunch of his stuff, but also taking out a bunch of stuff. Space Marine Predator goes down for Ace of Swords, Noisy only with double Assault Terminators, as well as the Force Commander. Uh, it's definitely going to be very, very easy for Noisy to take out any vehicles right now, pretty much. Anyway, we do have some Great Unclean One versus Avatar action. It's coming down to the wire with 52 to 47 VPs. Scouts, Bolter Scouts from Ace of Swords are going for the cap, but they might just go down uh, trying to capture this point. Plasma Cannon Shot goes in from Ace of Swords. He's got setup teams out of here with only a few of their models. I think the Avatar is now in a lot of trouble because it's taking Laz Cannon Shots from the Predator. I think the... The Laz Cannon Devastator needs to make sure that it targets the Great Unclean One, as well as, well, alright, Avatar is definitely going to go down, but can the red team make this an even trade? Because the Laz Cannon Havoc is, or the Laz Cannon Devastator is not targeting it, might have its line of sight blocked. Alright, takes a shot, the, the Reapers need to unload their damage to finish off the Great Unclean One to try to make it an even trade, and the Laz Cannon Havoc, or the Laz Cannon Devastator, oh my god, actually finishes it off. So at least an even trade in those in that super unit exchange. And we've got ter Terminators with really not that much health uh, going to finish off a few squads. Actually, wow, they finished off both of the Devastators, though. So at least that was well played, but they are getting sniped now. Two, I think at least one Terminator model just died, uh, and the blue team needs to get on a point though. That's that's really key for them. So the Force Commander is getting on a point. He's actually going to switch out, put the Lone Assault Terminator on the point while the Force Commander goes out and fights. You know, we had a Imperial Abyss here, which will deny the point for a little bit, prevents the red team from capturing the point. Heretics in here are not exactly going to win against the Assault Terminators, although for as long as they are alive, they will do some decent damage against the Terminators. Chaos Space Marines at range will be pretty good. That is key. Using the Pestilence Strike ability, stunning the Assault Terminators. That put the, the Terminators in a lot of trouble because they were taking damage from the Heretics pretty much unanswered for a moment, uh, as well as the Chaos as well as the Plague Champion. Here is an Orbital Bombardment. This Terminator from Ace of Swords is not going to get out of there alive, and it looks like Orbital Bombardment does not hit anything, but, um, well, whoever it was from, it is dying. Oh, it does hit something, and now the those tacks might just die. No, because there's one tack model that is far away. One to one cap again, 24 to 47. Terminators losing a ton of health. I think they're going to want to get out of here. Unfortunately, these Terminators... Uh-oh. All right, these Terminators are are both going to die. Unfortunately, although time is running short... Well, I don't know if maybe that was the only choice that he had. But uh, it looks like the red team is going to take this. Only eight VPs left for the blue team. Floyd is moving in, but he runs out of time, and the blue team actually concedes. And yeah, I mean, they just ran out of squads. So that was the cast. Hope you enjoyed it.